CataractCoach.com. Pupil stretching without iris damage. So here's how to avoid damaging the iris and the sphincter muscle. Our operating guest surgeon here is Dr. Christian Timschwick from Germany. And so we're going to show you the video at two times normal speed. You can see the prep here at the beginning with the povido iodine solution. That looks great. And here's the case. So not too bad of a pupil, probably a four millimeter pupil or so. Not too small, fixating the eye here, making a main incision, and then using that same keratone to make a paracentesis on that right-hand side, and then another paracentesis on the left-hand side. All righty, that looks pretty good. So here's the technique. So first things first, you gotta make sure you have good anesthetic, so you can put some more anesthetic inside of the eye. Typically, this is preserve-free lidocaine, cut 50-50 with balanced salt solution, and then you need to fill the anterior chamber with your viscoelastic. So here, filling up the AC with your viscoelastic, getting a nice fill in there. You gotta keep this eye inflated as you put in your two instruments to cause the pupil stretch. Now the trick of the pupil stretch is to avoid damaging the iris, and here's how you can do it. You can do just a moderate stretch. You don't have to extend all the way out to the angle of the eye. So it looks like a push pull in one hand, a coogan hook in the other, and pushing, a, or a Y hook in the other, and then you're gonna push across from each other, so more viscoelastic here. Help lift that iris off the lens capsule. Don't damage the anterior lens capsule with these two stretching instruments. So here they go inside the eye. The right hand has a coogan hook. The left eye has a Y hook. And you can engage the iris there and there and push apart. And that's just about it. So avoid going all the way into the angle. And that will avoid damaging that iris sphincter muscle. And you can go now about 90 degrees away and do a stretch again, and taking your time, and there you go. And again, don't damage the lens capsule either. And that's enough of a stretch. Now you can just use more viscoelastic to get a little bit more viscomadriasis, and that is sufficient. So by not damaging the iris, you're able to now expand the pupil for your cataract surgery, but then have the pupil go back to a normal shape and size and function in the post op period. Now, also keep in mind, this surgeon is operating on a patient with a light-colored blue iris. And that is, of course, more challenging because irregularities of that light-colored iris are very easy to spot at conversation distance. When you're about a meter away from the patient, looking at the patient's face, you can tell. But if the patient has very dark brown irises, it's a lot harder to tell. And that's a little bit more forgiving. So you got to know your patient population here. So let's see the nuclear removal technique here. Good hydro dissection. Looks like there's some reasonable nuclear density in this case. And it looks like surgeon sitting superiorly. So let's see what we got here. Faco going in the eye. And then here comes the chopper. I like that chopper. Looks like a kind of a vertical chopper maybe or horizontal chopper. Let's see. So buzzing in. Oh, it looks like a rotating here with the chopper. Okay. And the technique's going to be... Looks like a combo chop, maybe, a more horizontal slash combo chop. Looking good. Let's split the nucleus again. And now you're going to create quadrants. Beautiful technique here. What's not to love? Very nicely done. Surgeon's doing a beautiful job of, of disassembling and emulsifying that nucleus. Taking the pieces out nice and easy. Doing great. And we'll get this thing rotated. And then you're going to chop it some more. After about quadrants, you're pretty much done chopping. You don't have to do a whole lot more than that. You can just get the pieces up and then just aspirate them down. There you go. Last few pieces going in here. Now, sitting superior is a little bit more challenging if the patient has a very prominent brow. And you can see that in some, some patients, especially male patients. But uh, otherwise, in most cases, I tend to prefer temporal. But certainly a superior approach like this works very well. So now the chopper's already out of the eye, and then the rest of the nucleus are moved, and here's the epinuclear shell, and that goes down pretty easily as well. So very nice technique here. Now I get, let's get that eye back in primary a little bit more. And then now we can remove the remainder of the lens material and call it a day. So interesting case here. I do like the technique here. That was done very, very well. And again, especially the pupil stretching technique do not overly stretch the pupils. 
you don't want to cause damage, especially in the light colored iris like this. So there's the nucleus completely removed now. Now it's time for the cortex removal and the eye probe. Oh, by manual approach. Of course, we should have guessed that because it's European, number one. And number two, at the beginning, we saw the surgeon making two pairs and T's incisions. So you can do half the removal one way and then switch hands and complete it in the other direction as well. So very thorough. And then we may as well, at this point, you may as well watch until the end to see what kind of lines we put in the eye. So here's the switching of the hands for the bimanual IA. And that works very well, beautifully cleaned up. Oh, and now hydro implantation, I like that. So just the BSS on the infusion, keeping the eye inflated. There goes the eye wall and the capsular bag, nicely placed. I do like the technique of the hydro implantation. I don't commonly do it, but I do like it. Good job. Anyway, a pleasure to watch you operate. Dr. Christian, beautiful case.